Hi, Earl Warren family. It's Mrs. Burke, the art teacher. And I sure wish that we were meeting in the art room right now. But this year is different, isn't it? Instead of meeting in the art room, we get to meet in our own rooms. Each week, I'll be coming to you from my art studio, and I'll get to come into your art studio, which might be your bedroom, or your kitchen, or your living room, or wherever it is that you're doing school this year. But just because we can't be at school together doesn't mean that we don't get to create together. In fact, this year, every week, we're going to say this together. We're going to say, at Earl Warren, we are going to draw together even while we're apart. And what that means is, yes, we're going to do some drawing because this is art class. But it also means that we're going to draw together as a family, as the Earl Warren family. We're going to create things together. We're going to get to share them with our teachers. And they're even going to get to be posted on the Facebook page and on the school website. So even though we're separated by space, through art, we're going to get to draw together. Before I start today's lesson, I wanted to share a piece of art with you that means a lot to me. This is a little piece of art that I got from a local artist. I want you to look really closely at it. Maybe it goes this way. Maybe it goes this way. But look closely at it and Think about what you see. Look at the colors, look at the textures, look at the subject matter. What do you think it is? Well, you're right if you said it's flowers, but it's kind of a different kind of flowers. These are dandelions. They're weeds. And look at the background. Even though we see lots of different pretty colors of purple and gray and brown and pink and white, do you know what that is? That's asphalt from a parking lot. This is a painting of weeds growing in a parking lot. Now that doesn't seem like the usual subject of art, does it? But I keep this painting close in view in my studio all the time. You know why? because it reminds me that we can find beauty everywhere. That even weeds growing in a parking lot can be beautiful. And even this time, which isn't what any of us wanted, not getting to be at school together, not getting to be on the playground or in the art room together, even though it's as hard as a parking lot, some beautiful things can grow out of it. So I keep this right on the wall next to my desk in my studio so that I'm always reminded that we can find beauty everywhere. Well, we're gonna create a lot of beautiful things even in this hard time together this year. And when you picked up your supplies, you were probably given a bag like this. It's like a treasure chest, isn't it? There are so many fun and great things in here. Markers and crayons and colored pencils and scissors and tape and glue and a ruler and watercolors. And we're going to use them all over the course of the year. And today, we're going to just play with them. We're going to do a little project together that uses almost all of the supplies in your bag. So what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper and set it down on your workspace. And then get out your supplies and maybe put them out on your desk so that you can look at them. And then we're going to create something fun and unique together. Okay guys, so here's what we're gonna do today. We are going to have fun playing with all of our supplies, with our colored pencils, with our crayons, even with our rulers, with our markers, and even with our watercolors. But the first thing we're gonna use is our Sharpie. Now, each of you has one of these in your bag. If you don't have your bag out, go ahead and get your bag and pull out your Sharpie. And I want you to look at that Sharpie and I want you to say, this is a dangerous tool. Now it's not dangerous because it could hurt somebody, but it can be dangerous because it can get on your clothes and your furniture and it won't come out. So we wanna treat our Sharpies with lots of respect 
and remember that they are permanent markers and it's a privilege to get to use one for art. So we're gonna start off today with our permanent markers and we're gonna draw something together, but each one of our pieces is gonna look a little bit different. And then we're gonna use all of our other supplies in different ways to fill in our shapes. And we're gonna make a unique piece of modern art today. So the first thing I want you to do is put your paper down in front of you. I like to have mine landscape, which is sideways. You can have yours really any way you want. For this project, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna write my name in kind of a funny way. So I'll write Mrs. Burke, but I'm not gonna really write it in a way that you can repeat, can read it. So watch, I'm gonna write M, and then I'm gonna put my R for here, Mrs. M-R-S. That doesn't look like Mrs. Does it? I'm just overlapping my letters and writing them in a funny way. And then Burke, I'm gonna do a big B. And maybe a little U over here. And maybe my R is gonna come here. And then I'm gonna do a K over here. And I'll finish up with my E. Now notice, when I wrote my name, I filled up almost the entire piece of paper, didn't I? That I did M-R-S-B-U-R-K-E. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to take your Sharpie and I want you to write your name huge. Let your letters overlap. You're gonna create kind of a big jumbled mess of letters. So if you need to pause the video here, go ahead and pause it and write your name on the paper too. Maybe your name is Jaime, and you're going to write a J, and an A, and an I, and an M over here, and a little tiny E over here. However you want to write your name, go ahead and write it now. Okay, so now we're back, and we've got this jumble of letters, but I, what I don't want in this piece is sticks sticking out. Can you see here how this line just kind of hangs out by itself and this little line hangs out by itself and the ends of my E's just hang out by itself? Instead of having lines that are all lonely by themselves, we're gonna bring them together and make shapes. Just like we don't like to be alone and by ourselves during this time of isolation, we wanna come together. And so there's lots of different ways you can connect your lines. Let's look at my E here. If I want those lines not to be by themselves, but I want to connect them together, I can just draw a little squiggly line and bring them together. Now those two lines aren't lines anymore, but they made a neat shape. Or maybe I want to try my ruler. Maybe I want to connect this line with this spot over here, but I like nice straight things. So I'll take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line straight like that and connect those lines. This little guy needs to be connected to somebody, so I'm gonna draw him down like that. So I'm gonna keep connecting my lines. Any place where I see a lonely little line, I'm gonna connect him to another line to make a shape. So here, I might do another squiggle. All right, let's see if there are any more little lines that we don't want to leave lonely. Oh, there's a little tiny baby line right there. So I'm just going to boop and make a shape so that that line is connected. So now it looks like all of my lines are connected. And what that did was that created a big collection of interesting shapes. Look at all of these neat shapes that my name created. I bet your name created all sorts of neat shapes too. So here comes the fun part. 
we're going to color in our shapes using all of our supplies. So I'm gonna start with crayons. And ooh, I love a brand new box of crayons. Look at all those fun, sharp colors. I'm gonna pick one color that I like. I'm a big fan of red. And I'm gonna just color in one of my shapes. Now, you guys are gonna notice that I don't always hold my pencil the right way. So sometimes I squish my hand up like this and your teachers might gasp in horror. I think we're supposed to hold them like this, but sometimes I'm gonna squish my hand up. So I'm gonna color in one shape with crayon. Now, when I was in the first grade, I had a teacher named Mrs. Sharkey. And Mrs. Sharkey always made us outline our shapes first before coloring them in. So if you wanna do that, you can outline your shape kind of pressing hard with your crayon and then color it in a little bit lighter with your crayon and it makes it look really nice. Now there's only really one rule for this whole project and that is anytime you color in a shape on one side of your paper, I want you to find a shape on the other side of your paper and color it the same way. That way, every shape has a friend that matches on the page. So I colored this little one red. I think I'm going to color this big one red now too. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do an outline all on the inside. Look how big this shape is. We're going to have a big red interesting shape. Now notice when I'm coloring in, I'm doing my best to make the lines go in the same direction. Now you can use crayons in lots of different ways and I'll show you a different way to use your crayons in just a second. But for these two, I outlined them and I'm going all in one direction. I missed my outline a little bit there. And if you go outside the lines on this, that's totally okay. This project is for fun. This is getting the feel of our colors, getting the feel of our art supplies and playing around. So I did two there with crayon. I'm going to do something a little bit different with crayon in two other spots. So this time I'm going to take a green and a blue crayon and I'm going to overlap my colors. That means I'm going to use two different crayons in the same shape. So I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. I'm going to outline in blue. So I picked this shape right here. And then, oh, instead of going straight, I think in this one, I'm going to go curly. So I'm going to fill in my shape with some curly blue. See how I made little spirals? Then I'm gonna take my green crayon and I'm gonna do curly green over the top of that. Did you know that you can color color on top of color on top of color on top of color with crayons and keep going probably to infinity? So we want everybody to have a friend in this art piece. So this one here has blue and green and curly, and I'm gonna make a friend for it way over here on the other side. You might have a friend right now who lives way on the other side of your neighborhood. So maybe you can think about them and imagine that they're creating art at the same time that you are. That's a fun thing about art is it draws us together even when we're apart. So there we go. So we did two with crayon, two reds, and then two blue greens. And I think I'm gonna put my crayons away for a minute. Now, this is your art piece. You can do whatever you want. If you decide you wanna do the whole thing in crayon, go for it. But I'm gonna show you some of our other supplies. I think I'll pull out the colored pencils. I'm gonna pick a purple. So with our colored pencils, we really have two ways to use them. They have a sharp point 
and they have a long side. And that's kind of the same with a lot of our materials. So we can do the same thing. We can outline on the inside of our shape. I'm gonna outline this one. You see how I'm kind of going back and forth? It's almost like I'm scrubbing that colored pencil to make a nice bold outline all around the inside of my shape. But guess what? On this one, I'm not gonna color it in. Instead, I'm gonna do a design. I think with my colored pencils, I'm gonna do a pattern. I'm doing some lines, just like that. And let's go across those lines too and make a little bit of a checkerboard. All right, so this guy is done, but he needs a friend. So, hmm, let's pick, let's pick this little teeny tiny guy over here because that'd be kind of fun. Maybe you're really tall and maybe you have a friend who's not so tall, but you have a lot of things that you like in common. So we're gonna do one tiny little friend over there. With another colored pencil, this time I think I'm gonna choose orange. This time I'm not gonna outline at all. I'm just gonna use the side of my colored pencil and I'm just gonna color it in. And did you know that colored pencils, you can do the same thing with them that you can do with crayons. You can layer colors on top of colors on top of colors. So I could put every single color on top of this if I wanted to experiment. Now notice I went two different directions. I went this way and then I went across this way and it gave it just a little bit of texture. Ooh, I'm gonna do this orange over here in this fun shape. Oh yeah, I'm not outlining, I forgot. It's just my habit, Mrs. Sharky. Her words lasted forever. I still do her technique all the time when I'm coloring. So I went in one direction and now I'm gonna go in the other direction. So there's one set of colored, oh, I did two things with colored pencils. Ooh, now let's move on to markers. So many fun things we can do with markers. I'm gonna choose hot pink first. I love that these boxes of markers have hot pink as a special color. I'm gonna do this great big shape in hot pink. And I'm gonna use, markers have a thick side of the triangle and a thin side for the point. I'm gonna use that thick part. And I thought this, I guess it is pink. It looks a little red to me. I am gonna trace the outline of my marker or of my shape All right, so let's just color this in. There's lots of ways you can color in with markers. You could hold it this way and use that thin tip and start coloring like that. But I like to use the big broad side and draw lines and I pull them towards me. Start away from me and I pull them towards me because it allows me to color in really neatly with markers and makes a really bold, strong shape full of lots of color. Go back in and fill in some of those little spots. I'm gonna do the same thing. This pink one needs a friend. I think I'm gonna come up here in the corner and make a friend up here. See, I'm doing the same thing. Now you can pull it towards you and push it away from you. Just depends on what you prefer. All right, let's pick a new color. We haven't done any yellow yet. Let's do a bright yellow. I'm gonna do the same thing, where, but this time I'm gonna outline using the thin part of my marker. And this time, I'm gonna do a pattern. Just some little polka dots. And again, that little yellow guy needs a friend, so I'm gonna come up over here 
outline my shape. Now don't press too hard or you'll smash your marker, but you can make little dots all you want. Fill those up. All right, we're making something pretty cool here. Let's pull out the green. We don't have green yet. We have that green mixed with blue, but we don't have green by itself. Oh, I already, well, let's do one more marker. Let's do, let's do some cool zigzag shapes. So in this one, you can do any kind of pattern you want. So I'm gonna put that one there, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. And just like with the markers, I mean, just like with the crayons, we don't have to just put one color in at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in that spot. with another color. Now, do you have to choose all the same colors that I'm choosing? Absolutely not. Do you have to use all the same techniques I'm doing? Absolutely not. You can choose to fill this in any way you want. In fact, if you just wanted to use your Sharpie marker and make cool designs with your Sharpie, you could do that too. You don't have to use any of the colors at all if you don't want to. Just make sure that each of your pieces has a friend somewhere on your paper. Now I know what you're all waiting for. You're all waiting to open up these, aren't you? And if you haven't opened them already, there's a plastic wrap around the outside that needs to be taken off. And you need to go ahead and open it up. And in your bag, you were given a little brush like this. There's a brush inside of your watercolor pans and you're welcome to use that. Or you can use the one that's in your bag. You will need a cup of water. Um, I keep a jar full of water on my desk at all times for creating. You're gonna wanna put your brush in the water, wiggle it around a little bit. And then sometimes these um, brushes tend to lose a few hairs at the beginning. So you can pull on your brush just gently to get rid of any extra little hairs that might want to come out. After you do that, you're ready to choose a color to paint some of your spots. I'm gonna choose this dark purple. And in these paints, what I want you to do is I want you to make the paintbrush dance around the outside of the pan. Don't start in the middle, because when we do that, we use our paint so much faster. So instead, I want you to start around the edges, swirl it around and around and around until you can tell that you're making kind of a thick paint. Now that you've got paint on your brush, you can go in and you can paint any of your spaces that you want. So remember, each space needs to have a friend. I'm going to go back in and get some of that same purple, and I'm going to do this one right over here. Now notice that my brush is starting to dry out a little bit. You see how there's some white spaces? That means I might just need a tiny bit more water, so I just dipped the tip of my brush back in some water, and that let my paint flow a little more smoothly. Now between colors, we always, always, always want to rinse, rinse, rinse our brushes. So I take my brush in the bottom of my jar and I do a little bit of a dance until it all comes out clear. When I wipe my brush on the side of my jar, let's see, can we see that? Yeah, when I wipe my brush on the side of my jar, no more color drips out. I'm gonna pick this as a fun color, this bright neon pink. If you look closely, you can see I was playing with these before and I forgot to pull the extra hairs out of my brush. So my pink paint has a lot of little furry parts in it. I'm gonna do a little bit of pink down here. And a 
little bit of pink way up here. See, I'm doing the Mrs. Sharky method again. I'm kind of tracing around the outline and then filling it in. Well, I'm going to sit here and just color and finish filling in my spots and you might do the same. And then at the end, I'll show you my finished piece. and markers and colored pencils and sharpies and watercolor. And I sure had a lot of fun creating that with you. I would sure love to see yours. So maybe you can take a picture of whatever it is that you created and send it to your teacher and then she'll send it or he'll send it to me and we'll put them all together and see the masterpieces that we created together. Here's my finished piece. I hope yours looks uniquely like you. And I hope more than anything that you had fun playing with all of your art supplies today. In the future, we're gonna use all of these supplies and even more to create some fun stuff together. Now for next week, I have to ask you a favor. We're gonna create not only using our art supplies, but using some things that you might have in your trash can. So between now and next week, if you could save empty cereal boxes, empty mac and cheese boxes, empty pizza boxes, any kind of boxes that you might have at home that your family is finished with, I want you to collect those and keep them together because we're gonna create some really fun things out of them. In the meantime, keep creating, keep drawing, keep imagining, keep playing, and thank you so much that we get to draw together even while we're apart. <laughs>